thank you for this uh, uh, loving and affectionate naga style welcome i have now been traveling in your state for two days and i must tell you i've had a really special time last year we walked from kanyakumari to kashmir in the bharat jodo yatra to bring the people of india together different religions different languages different cultures different ideas we brought them together and we thought that should we should do a similar yatra from east to west and we wanted to send a message we wanted to send a message that the northeast is as important as any other part of india it doesn't matter if the population is less but the importance has to be the same this morning i had tea with some people in a village alichan 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 yes we were driving by and they invited us to have tea with them and one of the little girls who was having tea with us asked me what is the idea behind your yatra so i told her i had heard that there was a very special person in that house and the purpose of my yatra was to come and listen to her to understand what the people of nagaland are feeling what they are thinking and to also understand their way of life their way of living there is a ideological war going on in india the rss and the bjp are attacking all the different cultures in this country i can see while i'm driving through these roads your history your culture your tradition your way of life in fact just now when i was giving but just before i gave my speech i was told that the people understand english that's a good thing but i wanted my speech translated in naga language because this is the language you used to talk to each other so i have to respect it when i come here and i do the same when i go to karnataka or when i go to bengal or to kerala and this is the language and the culture that the rss and the bjp are attacking and disrespecting what you speak who you worship what you eat your marriage traditions these are your traditions these are nobody else's business as a indian person it is my duty to respect these cultures these traditions these histories i am almost ashamed to tell you that after what has happened in manipur the prime minister of india has not gone there as an indian person i am ashamed that my prime minister has not been to manipur yet their politics have torn the state apart they have divided the state they have weaponized the state they had burnt the state and they cannot even step foot in the state and that is the idea of the bharat jodo nyay yatra for the people of nagaland to have to drive through these roads is injustice to the youngsters to the old people of nagaland it is a betrayal of the people of nagaland how are we expected to bring a positive future to the young people of nagaland with these roads you say that there are competitive exams in india you say that for example the iit is a competitive exam how is it fair that to take the exam a naga child has to deal with these roads while a, a child in another state does not how is a naga child who does not have electricity in his house supposed to compete with another child who has electricity in his house how can a naga child whose parents cannot go to a hospital compete with a child whose parents can easily go to a hospital that is what the bharat jodo nyay yatra is this this road is injustice to the people of this town and the idea of the yatra is to bring attention of the entire country 
to the people of Manipur, to the people of Nagaland, to the people of Assam, to the people who are not part of the development that is taking place. Two or three people are controlling the entire business system in the country. I want to ask the question, why none of India's leading companies is owned by a Naga? You have Mr. Adani, you have Mr. Ambani. There are 500 of the biggest companies in India. Not one of them has a Naga leadership. How can you say you're running a fair system? So that is the aim of the Yatra. And I also see here that there are people from Nagaland, there are also people from the rest of India, people from Bihar, people from UP. And I am proud to say that the Naga people treat everybody with respect and affection. So your tradition, your emphasis on equality, these are assets for the Indian nation, for India. The rest of India should come and see the way people are treated in Nagaland. Another thing I have noticed, that when there are Naga people standing in a line, there's no pushing and pulling. Look, there's, there's thousands of people here. No pushing, no pulling. Everybody is giving space to everybody else. Yes. Meaning what? You respect each other. You respect each other's space. And you respect each other's ideas. This is the type of India that we are trying to build. So I thank you and your forefathers for showing us the way forward. And it's an honor for me to speak to you here today. And, and I, will never, I will never forget in my entire life the love and affection that you have shown me. I spoke about the injustice that the Prime Minister did to Manipur by not visiting Manipur. And I'd also like to speak about the Naga Accord that the Prime Minister had committed to nine years ago. I said I'm ashamed that the Indian Prime Minister did not go to Manipur. I'm equally ashamed that the Indian Prime Minister made a commitment to the people of Nagaland nine years ago and has done nothing about it. If you don't have a solution, you should not lie and say you have a solution. You can say that we have to work towards a solution. We will work towards a solution. But you must not lie to the people of Nagaland. And so, I would like to tell you that we understand that your issues are very serious and there is a requirement for a solution. A solution cannot be brought without having trust of the people of Nagaland, without having a conversation, discussion with the people of Nagaland. So I am quite sad having to say that what the Prime Minister committed to nine years ago is an empty promise. And I also would like to tell you that we are committed to doing the hard work that is required to get a solution for you. And I will also make another commitment to you that after the Yatra is over, I will come and spend a few days in uh, Nagaland with you. Yeah. Talking to the people in more detail, talking to the youngsters and understanding what their aspirations and dreams are. You are straightforward, decent, honest people. I'm also like you. And I just want to tell you that you have a soldier in New Delhi called Rahul Gandhi. Yeah. Yes. If you need me to raise anything in Parliament, if you want me to put any of your issues on the table in Parliament House, I'm more than happy to do it. And the young people here, especially the young girls standing over there, I want to tell you that you should enter politics and give Nagaland a new vision for the future. Thank you very much.